Okay, got that. Um, so Philippines 4 and verse 9, where Paul says, you know, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and um, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay, right. So he says, um, you know, the things that you, uh, what are the things that he uh, refers to? Learned, right? And then received and uh, heard and saw. Right? Four things that he uh, states, um, things that you learned, which means uh, Paul taught and they learned, things that you received, which means that Paul gave and they received. Um, you could say, okay, impartation or, or whatever, uh, they received. Like Paul also talks about how, uh, you know, for Timothy, he says, <clears throat> you know, the things, the gifts that you received were the laying on of hands of the eldership. Um, so they received certain things and heard, of course, the, what he spoke, what he taught, maybe what he, uh, you know, uh, in general conversation also, what we heard, and lastly says what you saw, right? Like how what you observed in my life. Um, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. You know, it's a it's a statement of uh, humility. It's a statement of um, uh, it's not an arrogant or boastful statement. Where you know, again, he makes a similar statement, right? In in Galatians, where he says, uh, um, you know, imitate. Be imitators of God uh, as dear children. And another place where he says, uh, you know, imitate me as I imitate Christ, and so on. So here um, we see that uh, he makes this whatever uh, you saw, uh, heard, whatever you learned, you know, these do, and and the God of peace will be with you uh, also. So um, so this is a uh, so the two things that we can learn. <coughs> Right. So even as we we learn right from others, from how our God teaches us um, through others, these are things that we can, these are avenues by which we receive, right? We learn, we receive, we we hear, <clears throat> we see their lives, and then we, you know, we learn. And these are ways by which we give to others as well. Right. We um, we teach. We give, we speak, and uh, through our lives, we impart, and people learn. Okay, so um, so these are avenues by which we we impact others, we influence others as well for the kingdom and edify others. Right. So so Paul gives this very important um, you know instruction uh, or I mean exhortation. You, know, you do this, and. Um, the reality is that the God of peace will be with you, and the God of peace will be with you, you know, which means that uh, one has to walk in such a way and do this, right? One has to be a practitioner of the Word of God, apply the Word of God, and do this. Uh, and he says, the God of peace will be with you. Right? So such an amazing promise. So um, let's uh, put this or uh, practice this in our own lives and uh, and say, okay, God, I want to apply your word. I want to walk in the uh, walk in the truth. I want to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, and uh, let these avenues you know touch others uh, as I teach, as I intentionally do these things. Let it touch other others' lives, and may I receive from others in this manner also. Right, so that the God of peace, and I will experience the God of peace being with me, like fellowshipping with me, communing with me. Okay, so um, so let's um, let's pray, Father God. We thank you that in all these ways, Lord, Lord, we can receive, Lord, from others whom you have placed in our lives, God, uh, as ministers, as encouragers, as teachers, Lord, um, as ones who guide and lead and point uh, Lord, everyone to the truth. We thank you, Father God. And Lord, we thank you that your desire is that we also do the same to others. And um, yes, Lord, as we apply, as we practice this truth, walk in truth, and uh, as we do these things, God, pray that as this word 
as the scripture promises that the God of peace, the God of uh, peace will be with you. And Lord, I pray that, that Lord, may we experience the fellowship of the God of peace, may we experience the power of the God of peace, the comfort and hope that comes from you, God, being the Prince of Peace. May we experience, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. OK, we're going to continue from uh, where we stopped last class. OK, um, so last class, we looked at um, God's guarantee. OK, God's guarantee to prosper his people. OK, so uh, we looked at four things. You know, Does anyone remember what are those four things? How can we be sure? How can we say that? You know, God is guaranteeing, uh, giving his guarantee to uh, prosperous people. Anyone? How can we say that he's, you can just put it on the chat also. How can we say that God, yeah, this, God is guaranteeing to prosperous people? So, and, uh, well, you can say, prosper me. Right? God is giving a guarantee. So, anyone? What are some things that we looked at? Um, God's nature is to bless. Right, right. So God's nature, we we study the nature of God, the character, characters of God. Um, was that Rinchen? Okay. Um, so we see that, okay, as revealed in scripture, you know, that's very important, right? Um, yeah, Nigel, so I see that. So uh, the nature of God is to bless. So the thing is, it's not, a, you know, an imagination of a person. Right? It's not somebody's creativity and saying, God must be like this. Right? But it's as revealed in scripture. Like That's very important. No? God reveals his nature, uh, reveals his character in scripture, in his word. And so as we study it, we understand hey, this is what it is. So that's why you know we can base it on the word of God. Right? So he has, he has promised, hey, this is who he is. And you know, many times we see repeated over and over again through scripture, through the testaments, that this is who he is, right? OK, then what else did we see? What was the other thing that we saw? Uh, we learned that Jesus is the Prince of Shalom. Yeah, yeah, Sean. So he's a Prince of Peace, yeah. But uh, how does that uh, uh, apply? How does that guarantee his? Uh... Okay, so so the, so word shalom itself, right? The word shalom itself is a, is a wholesome word. It it refers to um, you know uh, not just peace. Um, or lack of uh, confusion, but it refers to a whole lot of things. It refers to good will, it refers to harmony, it refers to health, healing, wholeness, prosperity. Right. So it is there. And since he is, his title is the Prince of Peace, like right? the source of that. Um, so again, coming back to the nature and character, right? OK. OK, so the general promise of God, the blessings of Abraham, the new covenant of blessings, OK. Yes, the general promises of God. So we looked at the logos and the rhema. Right? The rhema is the quickened word. So it's something specific for that uh, person. Right? It's a specific instruction for that person in that particular circumstance, right? So we looked at that. Then we see that hey, there is the general thing. There is the logos, and which is the the principles and uh, the principles themselves. Uh, when we study them, we see that it is God's heart to bless people. Okay, so we we saw that. Okay, then we also looked at the blessings of Abraham. Right, we looked at the blessings of Abraham. How was Abraham blessed? Um, we looked at several scriptures, like uh, uh, and uh, even his servant noticing that God has you know blessed my master. Right, so we we saw that, and. Uh, and the thing is, when we come to Galatians, right, we we also see that we have been um, we have been taken off that curse, right? He took that curse so that we might be um, blessed with the blessing of Abraham. So very specifically, Galatians three thirteen talks about that. So um, so 
the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, right? In our union with Christ, that we are recipients of the blessing of Abraham, right? And one of the blessings that Abraham walked in is uh, prosperity, okay? Success, increase, material uh, wealth, and so on, right? Then uh, we also looked at the covenant of blessing, right? We looked at the old covenant um, and the Old Testament saints walked in, and material benefits was part of that. Right? And now, in the New Covenant, we saw that, yes, it covers whatever is there in the Old Covenant and something more, right? His indwelling presence and uh, His walk with us all the time. So we are in the New Dispensation with the New Covenant of Blessings, right? So this, this should really be, you know, part of our lives, right? Uh, anytime we... You know, we we faced with circumstances, situations where uh, we see that okay, you know, God, I'm going through this crisis, I'm going through this, but you know, I go back to your word, I go back to who you are, I go back to you know what I am walking in as a as a covenant. You know, this is who I am, this is what I am a recipient of. Like we go back to, and that's that is walking in faith, right? That is walking in faith uh, based on what God has stated about us based on what God, who God is, right? And that's walking in faith. Um, and and that is that is walking according to his will, right? That is walking in the spirit, right? Living in the spirit, walking in the spirit, right? Ordering our lives according to that, right? Okay, so let's look at the next topic. Um, having said that, um, you know, which is, uh, let's look at some of the hindrances, Okay, so hindrances meaning what are some things that that hinder or stop or block, um, right? God-given prosperity. Okay, so we're saying that you know, we're looking at yes, this is what God intends for us. This is what God desires for us. Um, you know, but there are we can hinder His plans and pros. Uh, you know, His plans, His desire for us, His will for us. We can hinder, right? We we can walk away from him we can choose to walk away from him we can choose to you know uh, not obey him and that's what a carnal mind is right really a carnal mind which is enmity uh, uh, against god a carnal mind which does not submit to the laws of god so we know that you know even as created beings well the creator is all powerful but he's, he's sovereign but he has given us free will so we can choose to walk away and in our walking away, we can we can choose to really hinder what he wants to bring into our lives. Right? We can hinder that. Okay, so the first one that we see uh, that can be a barrier, that can be a hindrance, is wrong motivation. Okay, now to walk in the blessing of God, to walk in the things that God has for us. You now there are two things, right? You can have a wrong motivation or a right motive. Or the right motivation right now if our motive to walk in the in the blessings of god right talking about material blessing success increase it's god given okay god intends for us now if my motive for walking in even what god wants for me right it can it can be in the area of gifting it can be in the area of anything right if my motive is wrong then you know i'm i myself that my motive my intention is becoming a hindrance right it's hindrance it's becoming a hindrance now james chapter 4 puts it out very clearly okay it says you lust lust is what desiring something greatly intensely right to the exclusion of everything else you lust and do not have you murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have, because you do not ask. Okay. You ask and do not receive, because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Okay. So uh, it's it's very very clear. First of all, the methods that are used in order to get something. Okay, uh, the methods um, is, is saying you are lusting, okay, craving intensely. Um, you know you are going after things, and and it's in line with what uh, 
the flesh desires. Okay, so you lust and you do not have. Murder, you know, look at the method, murdering, coveting. Okay? And you murder, you covet, and you cannot obtain. You fight and war. Again, um, you know, fighting, it's not talking about a spiritual fight, it's talking about a carnal fight. You know, fight with the flesh and blood, which the Bible does not advocate. Right? You fight in war, and yet you do not have because you do not ask. Right? So the thing is that God is something that uh, God is someone who desires this for us. We looked at the nature, we looked at the promises. He desires for us to walk in, but something is hindering, something is stopping. And He says, you know, these are the wrong methods. Right? The motivation is is completely wrong, and uh, you are lusting, you are coveting. Uh, you are murdering, which means that you don't care about the process. You don't care about what happens to the other person, right? But you want it for yourself. You don't care. It's it's something very selfish. Um, uh, you want it, right? You don't care what happens to the other person, right? And then it says you fight and war, and you do not have because you do not ask. The simple thing is asking. And then in verse three, you ask and you not you do not receive. Even in that asking, you when you ask, you ask amiss. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that you do not you are asking uh, not in line with God's desire, not in your heart is not right. You are asking amiss that you may spend it on yourself or on your pleasures. Okay, now. And that's the reason he says that uh, you're not receiving. And that's the reason that uh, that you're not walking in something that God actually desires for you, right? Um, so how do we, when we look at this, and when we look at, uh, you know, go back to, uh, uh, let's say, 1 Timothy chapter 6, okay? Now, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17, says command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty okay first timothy chapter 6 verse 17 not to be haughty not to trust in uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy okay so when you when god gives us some things to enjoy don't i spend it on myself okay so that's the question right so am I not spending it on my on myself? So if that is the case, then then how can you know God say you are asking amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures? What do you think? Okay, James four, verse three. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. He's richly giving us all things to enjoy. And so, what do you think? Any, any answers? Anyone? You can put it on the chat also. No one. Okay, let me just minimize the notes. Okay, so yeah, anyone? Doesn't that mean see first Timothy six and verse seventeen? It says that uh, he gives us richly all things to enjoy. Okay, Jakin, uh if he blesses then there is no grievance, okay? Yeah, that's true. But uh, you know, he, he's he's desiring, he's giving, right? God gives us richly all things to enjoy. But then here, James four says that uh, you know you are asking a mess uh, because you want to spend it on yourself. You know, when he gives us richly all things to enjoy, am I not also allowed to spend it on myself? Or what do you think? 
um sorry i i think yeah go ahead uh, uh so what i feel is that um, so that is true that god has given us all all things to uh, enjoy but what he's trying to say here in james is that you don't take it to a certain extent that you leave god out of it you should enjoy that is true but at the same mm. time you should also maintain a relationship with god mm maintaining a relationship with god don't leave god out important point yes what i'm trying to say is that don't prioritize your pleasures over god keep god mm. first and then keep your second okay okay yeah very important don't prioritize don't let those things which he's giving you become an idol you know don't let that don't be just captivated by that to that extent that you leave god out very true very pertinent um jack in um yes we can spend it on ourselves and be grateful that it can that it came from him that's yes so when we look at uh, james 4 you know it says that um, you ask a miss so that asking a miss is uh, you know not uh, not morally right that's what it means it means that it is uh, in an you're asking a miss uh which means that you're asking something which is not morally physically morally you know that is not right okay and that you may spend it in another version says that you may consume it on your lusts okay so consume it something you know something sensual something that is uh you know an appetite which is not to be uh satisfied in that way right so that is what it refers to so um so when we say that uh, you know and when james very clearly states that you are asking unless it means that you know your your motive is that uh it's an immoral thing uh it's it's something that is not right in god's eyes okay and you're, you just keep on you're just asking for it and uh, you know how can we even ask you know but still Uh, here's a situation where somebody's asking for something you know, and that's a result of deception right and that's a result of maybe poor understanding of who god is right there's a result of deception where someone feels that hey uh, you know uh, like um, not too long ago uh, i was having a chat with someone who who actually uh, was living in sin and uh, um, uh, in sexual sin right so that person said that hey i actually thought that this was a gift from god right so that person's understanding of god understanding of god's word uh, and also to an extent uh, being deceived where that person thought that yeah this is this is from god actually it's god actually rewarding me right so no concept of right and wrong according to god's ways right? can it happen to a believer yes it happen right happened to such an extent where that person thought that yeah i am actually you know walking in god ways god is okay with it god is right with it which means that conscience was seared right uh, the holy spirit's voice is you know suppressed in a person's life where the person thinks that hey you know this is this is fine okay so you can actually go to god and ask a miss god give me give me this give me this that you may spend it on your pleasures it's just you and yourself and spending it on your pleasures right so so that is that is a scenario but also i want to sh- you know share from 1 timothy uh, you know 6 and verse 17 because um, when we think that okay when we look at james 4 we we think that okay uh, i should not enjoy good things right in the right way you know so we feel guilty right uh, <clears throat> you know as as a child of god you know uh, i should not enjoy good things in the right way right um sometimes we we feel guilty right and uh, we, we let's say you know, god blesses us with good things maybe you know you have new things you have uh, you know maybe uh, something that you heart desired and and it's it's right in the eyes of god but still we feel guilty because you know we look at it and say oh i'm spending it on myself you know, is it wrong right uh, and you feel, feel guilty and maybe condemned and so on so just you know, this verse gives us the freedom you know god is the heavenly father 
you know, as a father, as a parent, would you want your child to, you know, enjoy things responsibly and in the right way? Of course. At the right time, in the right manner. Yes. Right. So, uh, just wanted to share that as well. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for all those responses. Good. Let's look at another verse. I think we looked at it earlier. Luke 12, where the Lord Jesus teaches the parable uh, of the rich man, right? He's 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 done a fantastic job. The field has been good, and he's worked hard, obviously. You know, he's worked hard. He's had some workers. He's been diligent, right? So uh, the, the it yielded plentifully. But what did he think within himself? You know, there is no room to store my crops. So... I will do this, I will pull down my barns, build greater things, and which is a logical thing to do, right? So to to uh, to consolidate the the harvest or to uh, you know to make sure that the harvest is stored in the proper way, that's a logical thing to do, right? So he's saying, oh, I'll build greater, build bigger barns so that I can store all my crops and my goods. But then he goes on to say, um, soul you have many goods laid up for many years take your ease eat drink and be merry right uh, and then god you know god says this night your soul will be required of you then whose things will whose will those things be which you have provided and more importantly verse 21 says so is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards god so obviously this person uh, in this parable is a person who is who is a diligent worker who is wise uh in storing the harvest is a good steward right i don't want to waste those things which are coming in i want to store it in the proper way used to the proper way but uh, the problem is that he was not rich towards god it was it was only his himself and his needs, and uh, he was not rich towards God. So obviously, that aspect is what was the motive. What was the motivation? So when it comes to a wrong motivation, that begins. That becomes a hindrance. Something that God wants and desires for us. Right? Okay. The second thing is, you know, the wrong methods. Okay. So James four, we saw some of the wrong methods: lusting, murdering coveting fighting right wrong methods in order to get those things which are which are you know which are which are not wrong in themselves right but the methods are wrong okay. uh, philip uh, sorry psalm 5 and verse 4 for you are not a god who takes pleasure in wickedness nor shall evil dwell with you you are not a god who takes pleasure in wickedness anything wicked anything unrighteous God does not take pleasure in it. Okay, Verse 12, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. You will bless the righteous. Right? And uh, Psalm 23, again, you see that the psalm is saying that he will lead me, the good shepherd, he will lead me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. So he will lead us in those kinds of paths, you know, those kinds of decisions and, and processes. He will lead us in paths of righteousness, right? So, so we we could think of you know good things, but if those good things have wrong methods, you know, in in achieving those good things, if the method is not God approved, right, uh, then that is again a hindrance. So whatever riches that are gained through those wrong methods you know that it's not going to be stable it's not going to be long lasting it is going to be very very uncertain right and 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 worst of it is that he is god is not pleased because he's not one to take pleasure in wickedness right so we see that uh, well the method that i use you know, is it god approved right uh, because there are you know some some things that uh, people suggest or the world suggests which are you know get quick or get rich quick you know this is a shortcut and when you study the shortcut when you analyze the shortcut it is right well it's not really god honoring 
time it goes against integrity and, and the ethics of the kingdom right so so we need to really examine that you know maybe god has called you to be a businessman maybe god has called you to be a professional and uh, working professional maybe god has called you to do certain things some projects and you know uh, in his kingdom for benefiting people yes that's very noble that's very good uh, but examine the method okay so and and it's a difficult call you know it's a good, difficult thing because uh, you know not everyone is wants to walk in that not everyone wants to adhere to they just say okay this is how it is you know, this is how the system is this is how the world functions uh so let therefore let's do it you know oh, but i'm in ministry never mind you know this is how the system is uh, i'm a man of god I'm, I'm a woman of god never mind this is how the system is you know, let's go with the flow okay so um the wrong methods uh come at a price right wrong methods which are uh come at a price because God is not pleased. Right? It might uh, yield some success, some amount of success in the short run. Right? But um, in the long run, right? uh, it, is, it is not beneficial. Right? We, we begin to reap what we are sowing. We begin to experience um, the, you know, what have, we, what we have been actually putting, you know, the consequence of that we begin to experience. Okay, so methods. Okay, can God bless the method which is unrighteous? Can you, can you pray such prayers even, right? So God bless this venture. God, I'm going to do this, this, and it, I know it's not right in your eyes, but God, I'm going ahead. Please, you know, will God approve this, right? You know that he won't. Okay, so the wrong methods. Uh, Okay, then the third thing is uh, disobedience when it comes to finances. Okay. This is, again, uh, closely tied to wrong methods because once you receive the blessing, what you do with it, okay, disobedience. Um, Luke 16 and verse 10 says, uh, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. But he who is unjust in what is least is uh, unjust also in much. Okay, so so what does that mean? That means that faithfulness is not about just being faithful in the big things. Okay, faithfulness and being just is also in uh, in the small things, right? especially in the small things, because here. Yeah, in Luke 16 is talking about uh, you know the Lord is uh, teaching and he's saying uh, about faithfulness about good stewardship and saying that yeah he who's faithful in the small things will be faithful in the in the big things also and it's not the other way around it's not that uh, uh, that the person who is faithful in, uh, in the big things need not be faithful in the small things right um, it, it starts with the small small things are you faithful in it right so am i being faithful in in when it comes to finances when it comes to god you know entrusting me with it am i being a good steward of it uh, or am i uh, am i am i being wasteful okay am i being faithful in in the instructions that he's giving me okay so um, malachi 3 uh, when we uh, let's turn there malachi chapter 3 talks about um, Okay. Malachi three chapter nine um, chapter three verse nine is talking of, talking about you know uh, tithing. Okay, you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So you see that the whole thing is linked to people's heart and attachment with material things. Okay, so the Lord is saying, you know, I'm, I'm, everything belongs to you, but He's institute, 
instituting this whole principle of a tenth of it that we bring and offer to God as an act of worship. Right? Uh, it's not that he requires it, he needs it, but he he's put that in a principle so that we can come and we can bless God and we can worship him and acknowledge you know, a lot of things, acknowledging that he is the provider, acknowledging that everything, you know, he is the one who blesses us. So it's it's a joyful act, right? Look at it that way. We we come joyfully and uh, bring the tithes and uh, you know offerings and uh, so he says in tithes and offerings so two different things. Okay, so we're going to you know after this section we're going to look at um, uh, we're going to do a study on tithes and offerings, uh, tithes offerings arms. You know what is it? Some arguments for it, some arguments against it, and so on. So we're going to look at um, you know scripture and and look at it so that that is clarified for us well, people have questions um where should i give my tithes should i do this you know is it okay if i don't um you know uh, have offerings and give offerings and so on so 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 disobedience when it comes to finances okay. uh, well in his word yes yes put down certain things and it's it's actually for us to be blessed right if you look at it you know every commandment that he has put in um you know every commandment every instruction it is to keep us safe it is to bless us it is to bring increase into our lives right it is so that at the end we benefit out of it it is it is that we are safe it is that there is long life it is that that we don't open the doors to the enemy anything that you look at you now we might say god you're a spoiled sport god you know why can't i do this why can't i do that but if you look at every commandment, every instruction, um, it is so that we might be kept safe. It is so that we might be blessed. Okay. So also when it comes to you know, tithes and offerings, he says, you know, do this. I will open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing into your life. Okay. Then he says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Right. So this is the Old Testament. Yes, it's an Old Testament principle which holds good across, you know, testaments. We're going to look at, um, you know, scriptures, uh, and uh, we're going to see that as well, right? Okay. So when it comes to obedience in finances, well, God desires to bless, but when it comes to disobedience, that acts as a hindrance, right? That becomes a stump. That becomes a ceiling, and that's a hindrance. Um, to walk in God given prosperity. Okay. Then also the opposition of the enemy. Okay. If we do open doors, like Malachi 3 talks about the devourer, 311 talks about the devourer. And how what does the devourer do? He goes about destroying, you know, it says here, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. So the devourer's only mission is to devour is to make sure that uh, you know whatever you worked for the, the harvest is is devoured is 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 destroyed okay. and the lord is saying that you know i'm i i, I want to protect i want to protect so that uh, you get what you what you do you know what is due to you all the effort that you put in that there will be fruitfulness right so his promise is he will, he will not destroy the devourer will not destroy the fruit of the ground. So, so we see that there is there is the, the enemy who is real, and uh, he uh, he his intention is to uh, is to destroy. Right? John 10, 10, very clear. The the enemy comes, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, so uh, destroy everything that that God intends for us to walk in. Right? But praise God that He's a defeated foe, and He has God has given us all authority. All authority has been given to Him, and He has vested that authority, delegated that authority to us, right? To trample on serpents, scorpions, and all the power, all the powers of the enemy, right? So, if we open the door for the enemy to walk in, if we are ignorant of the schemes of the enemy, and if we willfully, you know walk in rebellion 
against God. We are obviously, you know, uh, inviting the enemy to work in our lives. So, uh, so then this then this happens. Right? The opposition of the enemy, and because of which he devours the fruit of our labor. Okay. So, uh, so these are some uh, some some more uh, some reasons. Lack of wisdom. Okay, these last two things uh, are, are quite practical, but some things that we do not associate with uh, with God-given prosperity. Okay, we say that okay, uh, if God wants to give, He will give. Right, and the reason I'm not experiencing this is because God does not want me to have it. You know, uh, if I have it, uh, if God wants me to have it, I will definitely have it. But the thing is, you know, there are these things. There are these factors which really prevent or hinder God from pouring into our lives. Okay, one is lack of wisdom. Okay, lack of wisdom meaning when God brings something into our lives, we need to have wisdom to handle it in the right way. If God brings success into our lives, how do you handle success? If God brings fruitfulness in ministry into our lives, right, how do we handle that? Um, if God brings financial increase into our lives, you know, do we have the wisdom uh, to handle that? Okay, just think about this. Look at this verse, Proverbs 24, verses 3 to 6. Okay, Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Okay, now we know that you know everything is tied to uh, material finances. You know, how is a house built? And we know it's stones and cement and, and in our day or, or wood. And uh, how is it established and made strong? We know that there are earthly materials, right? Okay, when you uh, precious stones or pleasant things and you know good furniture or everything, how is it? Isn't it because you acquire it through you know whatever means you buy it, right? But here it's very clear, you know, it says wisdom it is built by wisdom, by knowledge, the rooms are filled. Okay. And it says a wise man is strong. Which means a man who walks in wisdom, who uh, applies wisdom, is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. Okay, so knowledge, wisdom uh, is tied to finances. Is tied to the use of material wealth, and uh, and the access to it as well. Okay. So wisdom, right? So we can actually, you know, people can put a lot of money into your hands, but it just takes some time for it to all disappear, right? Because if you continue to use it, even if it's a big pile of money, right, one day it will become zero, right? If we don't have the wisdom, how to use it, how to invest it, how to save, so that it can be utilized over time right so this lack of wisdom is something that can actually deplete right uh, whatever god is putting into our lives whatever god is bringing into our lives so we, that's something to seriously consider right and and uh, and the best part is this again in james we see that if any of you lack wisdom you know we can ask god who gives to all liberally and that says that without uh, without ridicule right and uh, let me just read that exact uh, verse um let him ask in faith without no doubting right so verse 5 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him so wisdom is is key wisdom is required we need wisdom right wisdom is tied to Wisdom and knowledge is tied to strength, uh, you know, strategy in war, everything. Wisdom. By wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Okay. Now, the last one, you know, if you look at this, insufficient effort. Okay. Now, 
Now, what has that got to do with, you know, God-given prosperity? What has that got? So does that mean that I need to work in order to receive God-given prosperity? Well, that is what God says, right? The fact that God has different avenues of bringing prosperity into our lives. When you say different avenues, different means by which God brings wealth into our lives or finances into our lives, right? So if there is insufficient effort in the, men's, in, in the sense that whatever he has entrusted to me, if I do not work, right? If I do not put in effort, that means that that flow is, is actually uh, reduced and it even, even stops. Right? Look at Proverbs 10, verse 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Okay. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10. Whatever your hand finds you to do it with all your might, for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Okay. So it says, but if you look at the wisdom of it, it said, do it with all your might, whatever your hands find you to do it. Okay. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Which means that in all labor, there is reward. And uh, we need to understand like the way God provides for us. Okay, Many times we think, okay, supernatural provision uh, means that there is a knock on the door. I open the door and a person stands there and he has an envelope. And he has, you know, which has a lot of cash. He's just saying, okay, take somebody giving it to you. Well, that's one scenario. Yes, that God does provide that way. The other scenario is also you go to an interview and you attend the interview and uh, you get appointed, you get an appointment letter into in that particular organization, whatever ministry thing. You you work with all your might right? work faithfully work hard work diligently at end of the month there is provision coming into your life right so you, the your employment or your work is also a means by which god supplies which god provides you know, we should never forget that because we think that you know, god provision is always it needs to be this way I don't ask and then people give or, you know, um, but we need to understand that in effort, in labor, you know, God has given us some skills and abilities and is asking us to use that. And in using that, you know, there is a reward for that labor. Okay, uh, we'll stop here. Uh, next time when we meet, we'll talk about, you know, tithes and offerings and arms um, and, and, other, and those things. And also, you know, if there are any questions uh, from this section, uh, we'll look at that as well. Okay, so uh, thank you. God bless. We'll meet again. Bye-bye.